It's been a really weird transfer window for Manchester United. I think we can all agree on that. The Frankie de Jong saga and all this kind of stuff. But I tell you what, James, something really, really interesting has come out today. And that is that Paris Saint-Germain are interested in signing Marcus Rashford. And Marcus Rashford is interested in signing for PSG. Now, what I want us to kind of ask you about, and this is going to be the main title of the question, and obviously we can we can go off into whatever area we want here. James, how much is Marcus Rashford worth? Because I've got to be honest with you here. I've got to be honest with you here. It is so like Manchester United to wait until Marcus Rashford is paying badly to start selling him. <laughs> usually, usually what you try and do is sell somebody when they're at their best so you can make as much money as you can and then hopefully after you sell them they fall off a cliff, right? It, only Manchester United would see a guy at the peak of his value, see his value drop and then sell that player. But but let me ask you, I'll, I'll start that as a straight off question. How much um, is Marcus Rashford worth and, and if PSG sign him, what, what kind of fee should that be for? For me, there's two things here. If I was PSG, if you're going to go for a Manchester United forward, would Anthony Martial not be the one? He's French, you know, probably Manchester United would be willing to sell a bit more suits because I've I seen that they were looking for a wide player who can also play striker. Mar- Martial can do that job. But I feel like the Rashford thing, you got to look at it from both sides. If I was Rashford, incredible move. I go, is, I want it go. so badly. <laughs> yeah. Make it happen. Right. Straight up the bat. What you mentioned, what is he worth right now? I don't think he's worth much. And well, I don't this, think Manchester United value him that high, Jack. Well, Jen, this is what I wanna this is what I wanna say. Like, man no no no. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there. Manchester United will think this is an 120 million pound player. We don't think that, obviously. The world doesn't think that. What I'm going to do, just for a bit of colour here, I'll let you kind of continue talking, but I'm just going to check what transfer marks have him down as. Um, because, you know, again, it'll be interesting to see where he's gone, where he where he okay. hit, and now where yeah. he's gone to. For instance, right now, Harry Maguire. How much do you think Manchester United value Harry Maguire at right now? I think you've got to say that's a 25 to 30 million pound player. I think that's the way that they look at a player like Mar- Marcus Rashford. At the highest point, Jack, 100. But where he is right now, in it's not a thing where, oh, it's a bit of a secret. No, everybody knows that Rashford is struggling at this moment of, of time. Manchester United fans know that. You've seen the spot with Manchester United fans where they were hurling some abuse at him and he had enough and he had to go at that, like... At them back, it's this sort of thing right here where in, be- in between all his apologies. <laughs> but to me, it's 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 at this point for him right now where if you ask him deep down, he knows that he doesn't want to be there. Jack, there was even notion about him maybe going and joining an Everton. There was there was that sort of you know. So it, it, it this isn't a thing for me where like um this guy has Man United look at him and he's a prize asset that 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 they can let go. They probably would consider Ronaldo more valuable than Rashford right um right now. So he's got one year left on his deal, but Manchester United like a staple of Manchester United contracts is this option extension, right? Now what that does is it just protects them from if, if a player does really well or there's interest, they can never go on a free. They can just extend it for a year and then try and organise some sort of getting some sort of fee for the player. His peak value, James, was March 2021. So that's year and a half-ish ago now at £76.5 million pounds with transfer marks. Current market value, 54. But that's going that's that's going down from from, from where it was. 24 years old to me as well this does not have the skulls gigs neville manchester boy never gonna leave the club type vibe to it and to me i wonder if psg look at that game where you know because james manchester united knocked psg out of the champions league lest we forget right yeah, um like three years ago four yeah, i mean years it's ago a long now. it's a long time ago that's true but rashford scored the decisive penalty and i wonder if that sticks out to them at all so for me, realistically, I think if you're Manchester United, I think 50, James? Or am I being a bit generous there? Because I don't I think, think he's he... worth £50 million. Pounds, but to Manchester United, I think he's worth £50 million. Pounds. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, do, do you know what it is? Is that the way we talk about Rashford right now, we're acting like he isn't a good player. I think that deep down, Marcus Rashford is a very, very, very good, capable football player right. to play at the highest level. I feel like when, once he gets his head back, you're looking at one of the best wide players in Europe. I really do believe that, Jack. He has immense, immense ability. He might do a thing where he decides to go to the Bundesliga and you may see a flurry of what he used to be and probably get even better. He has that ability. But where he is right now, I think like a move is needed. Now, Man United are going to look at it from, from like from the point of view is like where are they going to get going to get the most money from? An English club will probably pay the most. Would PSG are PSG willing to break the bank? I won't say break the bank as much. Paying fifty isn't a lot in today's market, but fifty for Marcus Rashford at this moment of time, or even forty five. I I don't think it's you know feasible. You know, I. I think it's a I think it's a tricky one, but and I'm, I'm, what I'm doing very quickly, and I'm just pulling up Paris Saint Germain this this uh, this off season, see what they've done. So they've spent ninety five point eight five million. They've made twenty eight point one seven. Who did they buy, so Jack? Sorry, who did PSG buy? I'm not... Let's have a look. I, I know they bought um, Renato Sanchez. That's all. You got, you got Vitinha for thirty seven point three five. You got Nuno Mendes for thirty four point two. Renato Sanchez thirteen point five. Nordi Mukiele for uh, ten point eight. Um, and then players leaving a uh, centre forward who I've never heard of. Callum Wendo, Ariola's gone, and then another goalkeeper, Di Maria, uh, Javi Simons as well. Uh, Wanyaldum obviously has left on loan as well. So th- there's been some spending, but on these younger on these younger type of players. My question though, James, and I guess we'll kind of round it off here. Do you look at a Paredes? I don't I think it's going to be very, very difficult for Manchester United to tempt a Marco Verratti, but do you look at a, a Paredes or or somebody of that nature who you could potentially try and deal with here a little bit so Manchester United can get that holding midfielder position sorted? I don't think my United would go crazy to get a Paredes. I, I think the only one in, in that midfield that Manchester United would probably look at is somebody like Marco Verratti or uh, Renato Sanchez, but even then, they literally just sold them. <laughs> right. I feel like for PSG, Jack, I look at the way they are, and they got Messi, they got Neymar, two of the most creative footballer players we've ever seen, and Mbappe, who's very creative. And Marcus Rashford is probably one of the most valuable assets that like, they can find right now. Man, I, is there, I don't do think, you think... Do you think there's a bigger gap between the players and I know you like him and I like him I don't love him though do you think there's a bigger gap between the way a player is valued and respected and what they actually do on the pitch with than with Marcus Rashford and like don't get me wrong I like him but ah, you you just brought up some serious names and if Marcus Rashford's the replacement I mean that is a that's a long there's a gap between those guys no but I'm, I'm looking at the style of player okay Marcus Rashford to me is you don't need people coming to the ball Messi and Neymar will come to the ball. Let them be them. You need players who are going to break the lines and get beyond. In, in like last season, we only seen Kylian Mbappe being like the, the, like being the player to do that. That's why he was able to score 40, 50 yard goals. Yes, get it. He was spectacular. But when you have the service that like he's had, like you're gonna get chances. Marcus Rashford is at this moment of time to me. He's struggling from the point of view of coming to the ball. You can leave that and then just start making runs in behind. He's right. quick when he like to think about it when he gets direct, he's a problem. Um his finishing can is, is obviously wanting at times, but he can finish. So I look at the I look at what PSG has to offer, I look at what Marcus Rashford has to offer. To me, it's a match made in heaven the way they want to play and also how how and how, how direct they want to be with players like Messi and, and Neymar. Messi and Neymar. To me, it could definitely work with him going to um, yes, it seems it seems like Mauro Icardi is going to be the one going to be the one out the door. I just think yeah, that he hasn't men- played football in about two years. Like, nah. yeah. and from from a mentality point of view, again, that was a poor. You know, I I've, I've made this example before. Gianluca Scamacca, he could have gone down the Mauro Icardi route, go to a big club and just be the backup, be the backup number nine for for a team and not put a lot of work in. But he's chosen to go against that. Again, 
you know, one of the things that makes Mauro Icardi so great uh, is also one of his biggest detriments as well, and that is kind of a stubbornness and to a certain yeah. extent a level of laziness. When he's not the man, then he thinks, why should I bother? Um, Marcus Rashford doesn't have that problem at all. I think from a personality standpoint and who he is as a man, Marcus Rashford is, is a shining example of, of, of a professional footballer. So Mauro Icardi to leave, Marcus Rashford to come in. Guys watching, what do you think? This has kind of come out of nowhere. PSG interested in a guy like this is, is certainly a little bit of a surprise to me. How much should he go for? Should United let him go? Is that money going to free up a bit more money for an Anthony or, or for a Gakpo or any of the millions of other players that Manchester United are, are linked with at the moment? Let us know in the comments section. Drop a like on the video. Please check if you're subscribed as well. Just because the algorithm is giving you our videos may not necessarily mean you're subscribed. So do have a quick scroll down. Check there. Scroll. <laughs> and uh, James, anything else from you, mate? Guys, just hit that subscribe button. Really important for this channel thing to get it where where we want to be. We want to get to that thousand mark. Please hit the subscribe button. This is Jack and James, and we will see you next time.